Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. In this video, I'm going to be doing somewhat of a mid-length haircut, taking advantage of Sean's natural texture here and giving him a shape that's going to last a good couple of months. Obviously, I'm starting off by wetting the hair. And the first thing I'm going to do here is comb the long hair on top out of my way so that I have less hair to work with as I begin creating panels through the side of the haircut. Now, these panels are actually going to be a little bit diagonal. I'm going to shift them in the direction that the hair grows. So on this side, his hair grows a little bit back and therefore I'll be doing diagonal back sections. This is to make sure that on the days he doesn't style his hair, it's, it's definitely going to end up going where it grows if he doesn't style it. And so if we take the sections in the same direction that the hair grows, then what we tend to get is a little bit of a uh, nicer look. A little bit, it, everything just flows a little better if you take your section in the same direction that the hair is growing. So what I'm doing with each of these sections is pulling the hair out straight, parallel to the floor. And then what I'm doing is I'm looking for essentially the perpendicular, I hope I'm using that word properly, 90 degrees from the floor, which is straight up and down on his head, and I'm cutting the hair to that same shape. So we are essentially creating a box here. This is a very square haircut, as opposed to most men's haircuts traditionally taper in at the bottom. We are not doing that. We're keeping this haircut square. So with each new section that I pick up, I'm going to be picking up a little bit of the previous section and using that as a guide to know where to cut the hair. And I'll be working around the head doing this. Now you will find that as you get around the nape, you're really gonna be tempted to angle the haircut inward here because this is just what we've always done with men's haircuts. But let me remind you, this is a square haircut. And when I say square haircut, I mean it is literally cut to a square. The reason it might be hard to want to stick to the shape if you're so used to more traditional men's haircuts is this absolutely will leave a lot of slop down in this area and on the bottom half of the parietal ridge. However, at the same time, what we're really trying to avoid is having that very long top hanging down and piling up on a progressively shorter bottom. This type of haircut or traditional men's haircut creates kind of a bump on the haircut, which for the most part is good. And we often see this bump traveling through the side of a haircut on again, a traditional like classic men's haircut, but we're trying to avoid that. This is kind of breaking away from some of the classic rules. You'll notice if you look at the side panels here that we've already done, there's no strong weight line. It's just kind of a wall of hair with a little bit of soft layers at the bottom. So sometimes I like to stop at the middle of the head and then go to the opposite temple and work my way back. But on this particular cut, for some reason, I just continued working all the way around to the front. Now on the left side of his head here, the hair grows a little bit forward. So my sections are leaning a little bit forward. They're kind of a diagonal forward section here. Once all of my side panels are complete, I'm gonna bring the top of the hair down and I'm gonna begin connecting it to the cutting line that we put in throughout the side of the haircut. Now, as I cut the front here, I am going to over direct it back and I'll explain that more in just a minute. But essentially what we're doing all the way around the haircut here is we're looking for that shape that we created down on the bottom side of the haircut, pulling everything parallel to the floor and cutting it straight up. And we're just taking the top of the haircut and continuing the party upward. And just like as we are working through the bottom sections, we're going to do the same thing all the way around the top of the head, like cutting slices out of a pie, basically. Here you can kind of see that perfectly, vert hopefully perfectly vertical section. Now going back to the over direction I talked about on the other side, in the front here, I'm gonna take the hair right at the front of the haircut, essentially everything growing in front of the sides. Basically if the hair ha doesn't have hair growing beneath it, instead it has a forehead beneath it, I'm gonna over direct that back and I'm gonna pull that to the cutting line that I used on the sides. Now doing this, and cutting the hair way back there is going to cause the hair in the front to be very long because it's traveling very far to be cut. But then the hair just behind it won't be traveling quite as far and therefore will end up slightly shorter. And the end result here is gonna leave us with that kind of traditional classic long in front to slightly shorter in the back shape that we see in most men's haircuts. So now that the top is connected to the sides, what I'm going to do is eh, layer up the middle, take, take some weight out of the inside of the haircut. And the way I'm going to do this is by taking a strip straight down the center of the head, pulling it straight up and cutting it parallel to the floor to a square shape, just like we were doing with the sides. We are cutting a square here. 
Now, once I cut as much as I can fit into my fingers here in the front, I'm just gonna continue that line all the way down that strip in the middle of the head to the back of the head. I'm gonna do that until I pick up hair and it's not long enough to reach my cutting line. The next thing I'm going to do is move that guide over to one side. I usually start on the right, but it really doesn't matter. And now I'm gonna continue taking hair and pulling it straight up and cutting, using that guide to know where to cut, cutting parallel to the floor. When I, uh, I've said it a couple times now, this haircut is a square. I'm pulling everything straight up, straight out, and cutting it to a square shape. And here you can see if I pull this up, I have my guide in the middle that I created just a minute ago, and that shows me what to cut on the outside edge of that. I will continue to use this guide to work through the back of the haircut and pull up anything that reaches that guideline gets cut. As soon as I'm done cutting the right side, I'm gonna push that center guide to the left and do the same thing on the left side. Now, it's important to note when you're doing this, we're not over directing any hair back and using any of the previous section as a guide. The only guide is that guide in the middle. You're cutting off of that. And as soon as I cut something on the top here, I set it down and I don't pick it up again. It has nothing to do with the next section that I cut. In the back here, you can see I pull up some hair and see that, oh, the hair doesn't quite reach, so it doesn't get cut. If it doesn't reach, it doesn't get cut. So here I'm gonna go in and refine and detail the nape. Now there's no exact answer as far as how to do this. You can use clippers, you can use trimmers, you can use a razor, you can use scissors as I'm doing here. You can square it off, you can taper it, you can do anything you want with it. But what I'm doing is just kind of laying it flat to the head with water and point cutting all the way around. To leave kind of a soft, jagged edge there. Once I'm happy with the shape of my neckline, I'm gonna go in and buzz the hair beneath it. What this is going to do is allow the hair to move freely. When you don't have that kind of fuzz growing underneath, then all these longer hairs that we're leaving here are a little bit more free to dance around and bend and flow and do interesting things. At this point, the haircut is finished. So I'm gonna go for some product, in this case, ADH Dry. I just applied a little bit throughout the entire head and what I'm doing as I'm blow drying is I'm looking at the hair and seeing which way it wants to curl, which way it wants to grow, and I'm kind of listening to it at this point. And then as the hair begins to get more dry, I'm going to start refining the style by anywhere that I want the hair to be straighter, I'm gonna use a brush to produce more tension. More tension means more straight. So where I want it to lay flat and straight, I'm using tension from a brush. But everywhere else where I wanna see that curl and that movement, I'm avoiding the brush, and I'm just kind of letting the hair do its thing as it dries. Now once the foundation is set into place and everything's like 80% dry with this kind of hair texture, I will go back with a tiny bit more product and just kind of refine everything and shape it just to my liking, separate things, lift things, you know, just kind of toss it around a little bit until I like the way it looks. And here's our end result. This is a sort of medium length haircut without tapering in the sides, allowing Sean's natural texture to really work. Um, this takes very little effort to style. He can do this in like four minutes max. Um, and then this haircut is going to last a good while. We took roughly one to one and a half inches off all the way around. And hair grows an average of a half an inch per month. And so I would gauge that from the left to the right here, uh, as far as the growing out period, should take roughly two and a half months. This is a very long lasting haircut because everything is kind of long enough that it's, it's gonna continue doing what we want it to do until it becomes kind of too big and too poofy and needs to be cut again. Thanks for watching. Uh, please let me know if you like this kind of video so I can do some more of them. Thank you.